Kiana Tarasova noted the uniqueness of 12-year-old figure skaters at the jumping tournament in Moscow. On January 20, Margarita Basiliuk won the individual competition at the Russian Jumping Championship. Elena Kostoliva became third. How would you rate Margarita Basiliuk's performance? She became the first figure skater in history who managed to jump in a cascade of two quadruples in public. At this Russian Jumping Championship there were two very capable little girls Margarita Basiliuk and Elena Kostoliva. They are simply unique, they can do more than I could have imagined that one could be able to do at that age. They rode very professionally. This is our future. What, in your opinion, are their prospects in adult skating? I would like them to grow and ultimately not change. Remain foldable, jumping, fast. This is very important, because, of course, when a person grows up, he takes shape. I hope that growing up will not force them to change radically, and will not take away from them what they already have," said honored coach of the USSR Tatyana Tarasova. The ending of the team tournament at the Russian Jumping Championship turned out to be sad 12-year-old Elena Kostoliva fell twice in the final round and clearly injured her hand. After the draw, Kostoliva ended up in Alexander Jayalimov's team she took to the ice solely in the penultimate, fourth round. In this round, you had to jump either two cascades of three jumps, or a cascade and a combination. Lena did it well, she did two cascades of quad salkhaus triple toll loop double axle and triple lutz, triple toll loop double toll loop, although she scored fewer points than Margarita Basiliuk from Dmitry Kozlowski's team. Kosliva was also announced for the final round with cascades or combinations of five jumps. Elena fell unsuccessfully from the first jump and went to coach Igor Lyotikov in tears, holding his hand. Doctors immediately rushed to the skater's side and treated her hand with a freezing spray. It is unlikely that this immediately helped, but Kosliva decided to continue the tournament, she entered the second cascade, but fell again. And she stopped on Lyotikov's chest tears again. Her falls decided the fate of the race. Galimov's team was in the lead in all rounds, but gold after Kostoliva's breakdown went to Kozlovsky. Galimov and Nisina consoled Lina. Commentators Alexander Grishin and Tatyana Tarasova admired Kostoliva live and called her a hero. Grishin. Look at the will to win. Bravo, Elena Kostoliva. Tarasova. Unique girl. Unique. Grishin amazing athlete, and Maxim Trenkov handed her a large teddy bear. At the awards ceremony, everything seemed to be in order. But was such heroism necessary? Or it would have been better to take off after the first full, and not risk my health the pain obviously got in the way. It is clear that this question is not for Kostoliva, she really is a great guy, the coaches must decide here to take care of the athlete, and the second cascade would not determine anything anyway, or to take a risk, it is not very clear why. Kostoliva competed the day before in the individual tournament and reached bronze. And before that there was still qualification. Three days of competition in a row, and even with cascades of three and five jumps, isn't it too much for a 12-year-old figure skater? But that's not all. On January 15, 16 and 18, Kostoliva performed at the Moscow Championship, short and free program, elements, on January 11th and 12th at the Moscow City Cup, two programs. Three tournaments in a row, seven days of competitions only, this does not include training and warm-ups, it looks like a too tough schedule even for an adult. 65 jumps in seven days of competition almost in a row, not counting the Oilers. 21 of them are quadruple jumps. Her mother admitted that Lena had no chance of winning the individual tournament she was also recovering from an injury. Lena couldn't win. It is not ready yet, we will prepare for next year. She is after an injury and is on her ninth day of competition in a row, apparently, Elena's mother also counted training, yesterday at 10pm there was an award ceremony. Butch is a great athlete. We didn't expect to be allowed to participate at all. Even as a child, her health was so poor that she was faced with the question of life and death. But you have to fight and play sports an example for all parents. The Russian Jumping Championship has a very lenient age limit, and this is not bad in itself, after all, the tournament is purely Russian, but is this competition really necessary for a 12-year-old girl after 7 days of tournaments and an injury? And if they are needed, then maybe it was worth approaching them with less pressure. And certainly not taking the risk again after a serious fall. 
it became known that Elena Kostoliva escaped serious injury. After falling with a pen, Lena suffered a bruise. Thanks to everyone who was sick and worried, the skater's mother said on the social network. There was no examination. They applied ice and I hurt my elbow. If tomorrow there is a relapse, we will go to a traumatologist. Tass quotes Serena Kostoliva. The jumping tournament is the best import substitution that the Russian Figure Skating Federation came up with. For athletes, not only adults, but also juniors, for whom it is much more difficult to get prize money, this is a good way to earn money and try yourself in a new format. For the audience a dynamic competition at the junction with the show. For officials, this is an opportunity to once again look poised against the backdrop of the ISU, which has never implemented anything similar at the international level. The current regulations were reached in stages. At first, the jumping tournament was an element of the Channel 1 Cup so unnoticeable that the first two times it did not even deserve a full-fledged live broadcast. Last year, the competition was given a special place in the calendar. There were solid prizes, qualifications, normal broadcasting and even a lottery for fans who attended the draw. The current format is new again. One of the most noticeable changes is that the tournament was divided into three days, while it is impossible to refuse a team battle. This leads to the cancellation of the results in the individual competition. Last season, Grigory Fedorov won largely due to his freshness. His main competitor Peter Gumenik was pretty tired from the first part of the competition before the individual competition. Another innovation also responds to the goal of Fedorov, who churned out a quadruple lutz a year ago. To win you need at least two different ultra C. A logical step, since a jumping champion must be not only stable, but also versatile. The pairs received a separate classification and at the same time the most unexpected winner among the three types, Osakina Grivsenko. Attention to them was also heated up in another way, by appointing Kozlovsky and Galyumov as captains the latter tried his best, publishing more than 50 messages in the Telegram channel in three hours of the team tournament, including analytics like what kind of shorts does Shulia have, but the quad didn't hold up. It must be said that the fight between the two top figures of pair skating was a long time coming. There is much more electricity in their relationship than in the sluggish picks between Zajitova and Medvedeva, or in the completely artificial confrontation between Alina and Kamila Vliva. The is casually thrown home in the final perfectly walked the line separating an ugly squabble from an indifferent division of the prize money. Perhaps, the active role of the coaches was not enough, especially since the same Miss Venus spent most of the captains meeting next to the Reds, Galyamov's team, helping them distribute the athletes into rounds. It was possible, for example, to give each team a tactical chief, it would also be easier to avoid incidents with the rules. Dynamics, competition, intrigue everything would have been too ideal, but strange regulations intervened. Trying to correct the mistakes of last year, the organizers described in detail all sorts of restrictions and complications. Strict timing in qualifications and personal tournaments, limit on attempts on all three days, ban on repeated jumps. It seems that no one read the 16 pages of the final text. Athletes, commentators, and even judges, had problems interpreting the rules. In qualifying, half of Roman Kamzin's cascade was nullified. His unsuccessful quad was counted as a separate element, and not an attempt at a cascade, although in front of him was a perfect triple axle, which took the solo jump slot. Alexandra Bikova, who failed her quadruple throw in the team tournament, loudly asked the presenters and referees if she had a second attempt, similar to the individual competition she didn't, and it seems that this came as a surprise. Safi Mirviova and Arseny Fedotov were not counted for part of the content because they made two sequences instead of the one allowed. This restriction was initially included in the regulations, but for some reason neither the athletes themselves nor the captains and coaches noticed it. Fedotov also suffered in the personal tournament. Commentator Alexander Grishin doubted his victory due to the vague wording in the rules. In the final round of the individual competition, Arseny performed two cascades with a starting quadruple lutz, another solo lutz, and also a flip. Grishin was confused by this content. All the time he was grading, he was talking about the fact that the quad would have to be reset. The final content requirements were two solo jumps, one cascade combination of two jumps, one cascader combination of no more than five jumps, the solo jump and the first jump in one of the cascades must be different. 
The problem arose because the note about repetitions was copied from the semi-final rules, where all skaters performed only one solo jump. There were two of them in the final, which means the question arose whether both should be different from the starting elements in the cascades. If we consider Grishin's interpretation to be correct, not only Fedotov's result would have to be reset, but also Popov's, as well as Basiliak, who performed both cascades with those jumps that they had solo. Arseny's approach differed only in that both cascades began with the same quadruplets. But there are no restrictions on this. The ban on repetition applies only to intersections of cascades with individual jumps. If the organizers wanted to see at least three different ultra CS in the final, it was logical to specify that both solo elements should be different from the first jump in one of the cascades. This rule, however, is difficult to adapt to girls, among whom, let alone at the tournament in the world, there are very few who own three different quads or two quads and a triple axle. Then it would be necessary to replace one of the elements with a regular triple one, that is, the limitation paradoxically reduces the entertainment value. The presenters were also confused about the regulations. At the draw, they could not decide in what order the captains should select the teams, and at the awards ceremony in the individual competition, there was an awkward pause. It seems that the organizers did not immediately tell about the lack of a prize fund for the girls. The overall standings for elements among single skaters is a serious minus of the regulations. The times when the Russian champion scored more points than the male winner are gone. The jumping tournament is definitely not the place where the federation should have fought for gender equality. Another oddity of the format is the distribution of invitations to the team tournament. The organizers famously hedged their bets by making a quota for the winners of the Russian championship. This saved the day in the men's competition, where Semeninko, Dikidzi and Gumenik were unable to make it to the finals. For the girls, the result was more predictable, and Voliva's removal freed up another quota for participants in personal competitions. As a result, Ekaterina Kolsova and Maria Gordiva were invited to the teams. The choice is not the most obvious. The first was eliminated in the semi-finals with a score of 32-44, the second 8-26, while Kolsova did not have alter C and Gordiva entered two quads, but did not look too ready. It was more logical to choose Milto and Praniva. They were eliminated earlier due to a more difficult grid, but at least they could compete with the quad players. The guest quota for Tatama Shiva and Aliyev looks even stranger. Athletes of different genders and status. While Liza has never competed at the start line this season, Dima was fourth at the Russian Championship a month ago. Tatemashiva's invitation was known in advance, but Aliyev was chosen at the last moment. And this is debatable. Lefelin, Kondratyuk and Ignatov looked much more confident in the individual tournament than Dima, who was eliminated in qualifying. Perhaps the organizers were specifically looking for someone with a big name, but not the most optimal form, in order to smooth out Liz's lag. It was more logical then to invite Koyata, as well as Tatemashev, who refused to compete for the sake of the show. None of the guests brought any benefit to the teams. Both came out in the easiest round, failed one of the two elements, and spent the remaining two five hours on the bench. This highlighted another problem with the format. The contribution of some athletes is so small that by the end of the tournament you forget they were there. You could lose the competition in the final round cascades of five jumps are too expensive. At the same time, there is no room for error. A fall on the very first element immediately takes about 20 potential points. Kosleva's terrible foal reminded of another hole in the regulations, they also faced it at last year's Channel 1 Cup, due to Zanina's withdrawal. The lack of rules on replacing an injured athlete. Lin entered the second cascade through pain to no avail. This was her final performance at the tournament, but an injury could happen as early as the first round. And apparently, the organizers would not have found a solution. To minimize risks, it is logical to give participants three attempts in the final, and count the best one. At this tournament, such a rule would not have saved Kostoliva, but it gave a chance to Fedotov and Semenenko. Irina Rednina explained why she is not interested in the Russian Jumping Championship. I didn't watch the jumping tournament. I am a person of the old generation. I love competitions and figure skating. I understand that we are trying to create many conditions for the guys to compete and show off in front of people. But personally, I'm not interested in this," said three-time Olympic champion and state Duma deputy Irina.